Hello, welcome to a CQP web video tutorial in which I'm going to be talking about the keywords function. Uh, the keywords function is one of the things that dangles off this top menu here. So we have keywords just under the frequency list option. Uh, so let's click on that. Keywords and key tags, because we can apply it to any of the available word annotations in the corpus. Uh, as it says here in the little help box at the top, keyword lists are created by comparing frequency lists that you've built. And um, frequency lists that you can compare include the complete frequency list for this corpus, which you could compare to the frequency list for a different corpus. So you'll see that on this list you've got frequency lists for uh, quite a few uh, other uh, corpora where a public frequency list exists. Um, you've also got the option of comparing um, frequency lists for subcorpora within a corpus. So it says here frequency lists that you have created for different subcorpora. Uh, I have created four different subcorpora, each of which has its frequency list available. I'm not going to talk about the subcorpus page because I've talked about that in a separate tutorial. Let's go back to keywords. So let's look at that situation where we're looking at keywords that distinguish one uh, frequency list. Uh, the, the, when we look at the keywords that distinguish one subcorpus from another subcorpus. So let's choose our comparison points here. Now note that by default, uh, it will say whole of the corpus here and whole of the corpus here, but we don't want to do that. Um, uh, that makes absolutely no sense to compare something with itself. We want to compare one of our subcorpora with one of the other subcorpora. So let's compare fiction with general prose. So the fiction subcorpus is uh, all the texts where the genre is classified as fiction. General prose means general non-fiction, uh, not including academic prose and not including newspapers. So we select our frequency lists and then we select what we want to compare. We'll go with word forms for the minute. Uh, and then we have uh, two different ways to proceed. Uh, I will talk about this bottom one, the options for comparing frequency lists by filtering. I'll talk about that later. First I'll talk about options for keyword analysis. Um, you have four things that you can set. You can set minimum frequencies, that is only show me words that occur at least once, at least this many times in this frequency list and this many times in this frequency list. You can also set the significance threshold. Uh, it's set by default to 0.01% and the comparison statistic. Uh, currently log likelihood is the only option. There will be other options added in future versions of CQP web. So with those options we'll stick with the defaults and let's say calculate keywords. Okay so this is the keyword display. Uh, just like frequency lists, if you've seen my tutorial on the frequency list display, you have page controls here where you can paginate your way through the list of keywords. Uh, let's go, so next page, previous page, first page. Uh, and the, let's talk about uh, uh, the different columns that you see in this display. First of all, you have a number, which is just a rank order. Then you have the word, so the word form for which we're looking at the statistics. Then you have the frequency in the first subcorpus, the frequency in the second subcorpus, and a plus minus column. The plus minus column tells you whether this is a positive or negative keyword. A positive keyword is one that is more frequent in our first list than in our second list. A negative keyword is one that is more frequent in the second list than uh, it is in the first list. Now this is all done on relative frequencies. The frequencies you see here are the absolute frequencies, the raw numbers. Uh, the relative frequencies are what counts though for the comparison of whether this is higher or this is higher. 
Uh, can we see an example of that? Uh, an example where this number is actually higher, but it's a negative, but it's a positive keyword. Uh, can't see any examples of that, but it's certainly theoretically possible to have a higher number in this column, but it's relatively speaking more frequent in this subcorpus. So the plus here positive, the minus here negative, and you'll see that that also affects the background color of uh, the cells. For positive keywords, words that are more frequent in this frequency list, you have this color scheme of the, well it's light blue in this case, or you know whatever the main color is, uh, across here and grey in the corpus where it's less frequent or subcorpus where it's less frequent uh, and across here um, when it's a negative uh, keyword you can see that we have grey here and here and then the light shading uh, behind uh, uh, the light shading behind the subcorpus in which it's more frequent Finally, we have a column showing the log likelihood value, which is a measure of how much evidence we have uh, for there being a difference between the two subcorpora. So when the numbers are really big and there's a big difference between them, we have tons of evidence. Log likelihood of 15,500 is uh, an absolutely gargantuan log likelihood score. Um, and uh, that more or less explains the display that we have here. Um, each of these things here is a link to a query. So this uh, link takes us to a query for she in the subcorpus fiction, and this link here takes us to a query for she in the subcorpus general prose. So if I take that, click that, we should get, yes, we get the 17,000 matches in the fiction section. Uh, calculated uh, uh, looking within the 1.7 million words of the fiction subcorpus. If I go back and click on the general prose subcorpus, yeah, now we've got the 4,000 examples in 2.8 million words, and all of the examples on the screen are different to what was on the screen before. So any of these, if you're interested to see how it how it's being used in context in either this subcorpus or this subcorpus, then you can hop back and forth like that. So uh, that's uh, the keyword display. Let's take a look at this dropdown and what it can do. The new keyword calculation simply takes us back to the keyword options screen so that we can reconfigure it for uh, another analysis. You've also got the download whole list option, which like everything that's labeled download in CQP web, produces a plain text file as a download, uh, which contains everything that you see here, only the table is in plain text instead of being in uh, uh, in this nice formatted table. So if I drag my plain text editor across, uh, here we are. This is the download, this is the key item list that I just downloaded. And again, you've got the same colors, number, word, frequency one, frequency two, plus or minus, and then the statistical significance score. And item one is she, just as it is in the nicely formatted HTML table. And this, of course, as with all downloads from CQP Web, is suitable for archiving if you want to archive a record of your analysis, or it's suitable for copying and pasting into uh, a database or a spreadsheet or a word processor document. But I'll move that out of the way for the minute. You've also got new query, which again, as everywhere in the CQP interface, pressing new query and then go takes you back to the front page. And finally, you have two extra options, show positive keywords only, show negative keywords only. If you choose one of those two, then it means that you will only look at uh, one of these sets. So instead of having a mixture of pluses and minuses, you'll have either all pluses or all minuses. So if we say show only positive, we get all pluses. 
we go show only negative, we get all the minuses. And if we go show all keywords, that takes us back to the mixture of pluses and minuses. Now we can't really see it here because all the words on this front page are extremely frequent, but this list is taking into account the uh, restrictions that we put in, which were the default ones, the minimum of five and the minimum of five here. If you wanted absolutely everything, you could lower that to one and one. Likewise, it's not showing anything where the log likelihood uh, is low enough uh, that it wouldn't meet the significant threshold here. I think the log likelihood has to be, from memory, I think the 0.01% uh, boundary is a log likelihood of about 16. So if the log likelihood is below 16, uh, I think it's 16, uh, then uh, 16 point something. If the log likelihood is below 16 point something, then it just won't show up. Uh, again, you can use a higher cutoff if you want, or, a, or you can say show absolutely everything. I don't care what the log likelihood is, or you can choose one or uh, a more or less stringent cutoff. The 5% cutoff, anything with a log likelihood above 3 point something will pass that. Uh, for something like 0.00001%, the log likelihood has to be a bit high, a fair bit higher. So those are those options, those are what they do. What we can also do is we can choose to compare tags instead of um, the actual word forms. This is often very useful uh, simply for looking at lemmata, uh, lemmas rather than, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to press that button, I meant to press this button. Um, Lemmas, looking at lemmas rather than word forms is often very useful because it means that uh, word forms with different um, uh, word forms with different uh, what's the word I'm looking for word forms with different lemmata are grouped together, which can be quite useful. So uh, let me look for, for instance, the word I. That should also include me. Yes, it does. Let me go back. Um, so that gives us uh, a useful grouping of items before the keyness calculation is performed. So let's go back. Uh, so that's lemmas. Let's try part of speech tags. So in this case it's still called keywords in the interface but in actual fact what we're looking at is key grammatical tags. Uh, and there are some. So in fiction, past tense verbs and third person pronouns and first person pronouns, uh, third person again, second person pronouns, uh, uh, that's past tense verb have. These are the kinds of things that are more frequent in fiction than in general nonfiction. And plural nouns, preposition of, singular nouns, adjectives, these are all more common in non-fiction prose, which fits in with what is generally said about the differences between fiction and non-fiction, grammatically speaking. Fiction is often said to have a whole lot more pronouns and a whole lot more past tense verbs, whereas non-fiction has more complex noun phrases involving nouns and words like of and adjectives and numerals and so on and so forth. So that's uh, key tags. You can also get if, you use a, if you're using a semantically tagged corpus, then you can do key semantic tags. Let's do that again. Uh, and again, everything as before. If you don't remember or you aren't familiar with the tag set that is being used, then you can again always find a link to help on the different tag sets in use in each corpus down here at the bottom and if your corpus has been set up correctly it will take you to a list of links so for example for semantic tags we can click that link to find the documentation okay so we've talked about keywords and we've talked about changing to lemma or part of speech tag or semantic tag let's talk about comparisons between entire corpora so let's look at the whole of the Brown family against a public frequency list from some other corpus on the system. Uh, and let's look at, 
Ooh, uh, how about we look at the British National Corpus Sampler? Now this corpus is actually smaller than the whole of the Brown family, but the BNC Sampler is a mixture of speech and writing, whereas the Brown family is all writing, so perhaps we'll see some differences to do with that. And yes, indeed we do. We've got a whole lot of negative keywords. Er, uh, yeah, you, I, um, oh, m, mm, nt, v, got, yes. All of these things are minuses, so they are all less frequent in the Brown family than in the BNC sampler. Very high log likelihood values, and so therefore uh, these things are negative keywords. They are more frequent in the BNC sampler. They all seem to have to do with speech, so the fact that the BNC sampler is half speech would explain that. Um, again, depending on what corpora you've got with public frequency lists, you can do different things in terms of comparing different corpora on the system. Note that, oh, uh, what was it? We did uh, BNC sampler, calculate keywords. We don't have a link in this case because that link would take us to a different corpus. So we're, uh, we only have links in this column in that case. It's also equally possible to pick just one genre. So let's pick learned and compare that to the BNC sampler. Again, some spoken things more common in the BNC sampler, uh, negative things, you've also got of and the being more common in the learned data. So again, common speech versus writing things pop out when we compare an entirely written subcorpus to the frequencies in a half spoken uh, corpus. Um, so those are the different effects of choosing uh, different subcorpora to compare, uh, different corpora to compare. The last thing to talk about is the extra option at the bottom, which is to compare frequency lists by filtering. You'll notice that keywords analysis, you can't turn these down any lower than one. Right. So if we set minimum one, minimum one, we are still going to be looking at words that occur in both frequency lists, even if we turn down those minimums right to the bottom. Well, what if we want to look at items that occur once or more in this list, but never occur in this list? That's what the frequency list comparison does. It allows you to search for words that only occur in frequency list one or frequency list two. So let's say we're looking at fiction as opposed to learned, for instance, and we want to look for words that just occur in fiction. In this case, there's no statistical comparison. We just have the frequency in the fiction subcorpus versus the frequency in the learned corpus, which we know is zero. And uh, this is uh, a list in order of descending frequency. So shook, nodded, laughed, stirred, Sam, which is a personal name, uh, so it must be due to that name being used in the fiction. Lots of past tense verbs though, so again that underlines a point that we saw in one of the other comparisons. Um, and the drop down here is the same as before. Let's do the same again, fiction, learned, and this time let's look at words that only occur in frequency list 2. So here we've got numbers, here we've got zeros, and here you can see the kinds of things that only occur in the learned subcorpus, which means academic writing really. And you can see quite a lot of very scientific words, which is not especially surprising, uh, because the academic text consists of a lot of writing about science. So that explains the keyword interface in version 3.0.15 of CQP Web. Uh, and that uh, about wraps up this tutorial. I hope that's been useful.